quite often I need to transfer a file from a smartphone to my computer, for example a picture. This is not as easy as it should be because you have to log in somewhere and you need to install an app or a program. Or maybe you just send it to yourself in a chat. Annoying, right? In this video I'm going to show you a method where you don't have to do all this. And the best part? It can be used on any device you own. And of course, it's free. Let's get started. Okay, so this service is opened in your browser and it looks like this. You can start by taking a look at just how simple it is to take a picture and transferring it to your computer. First, take a photo from the web page. Next, press upload and you should then immediately see the file appearing in the folder on the computer. That's it! There is no installation needed to get this feature. Instead, you have to run a script. The script must be running on a Windows computer, and when the script is running, the browser will automatically open, and you will be able to browse files on your computer. You can see the file content, you can share text, and you can upload files. And the web page can be opened on different devices, so you can upload on one device and download on another. Since most modern browsers comes with QR codes supported, you don't even have to type in the URL. Just scan the code with your camera. You will then instantly be able to upload and download files from your computer. This instant access between your devices can really help boosting your productivity. As you might have spotted, the script is made in PowerShell, which comes pre-installed on every Windows computer. The script is stored in clear text, so you can manually read through the code if you have any security concerns. One limitation with this method is that it uses your local network for transferring the file. It does mean that you don't need any internet connection, but it also means that the two devices must be connected to the same router. Now, let's take a closer look at how we use this script. The first thing you need to do is to choose what folder you want to store the script in. I want to store the script in this folder, and that means that these two items are shared. This is a text file called Hello World, and this is a folder called Example Files. I can now start the script by right-clicking on the item and clicking Run with PowerShell. I then have to provide my administrator account password. And now the web page automatically opens in your browser. As you see here, we have uh, access to a folder called example files, and we can also see a file called hello world. In addition to this, we can see the script itself uh, shown here. So now we are able to access the file. We can, for example, download it from here. And you see it is downloaded immediately. We can also click on the file and we can see some additional details. We can see the creation date and the last write time and also the size. We can also see the file content by clicking on this button. Currently it's uh, nothing in this one, but we can go back and we can go into the example files folder. And here we can see, for example, the grocery list. Here you see all the content. And this also works uh, for pictures. You can look at this painting. There it is. So as you might have noticed, I could browse in the subfolders of the folder we placed the script in, but I am not able to access the parent folders that's what you have to think about when you decide where to store the script. I can also show some additional features. We have the server info box here. This shows first the server addresses. This is most important if you have more than one network card. Right now, I only have my Wi-Fi network card, and this is the address it has. But if you have more than one network card, the server will be hosted on all of them. Here you will see all the links to open each of them. Next, we have a button called Stop Server. This button will stop the PowerShell script. Below this, we have a firewall section. This is used to open the firewall port. The firewall has to be opened 
because it usually blocks the port 8080. But if you click open port, we can do it right now. The port should be opened and you will also see the state is said to be open. So now this uh, server will be available over the network. Next, we can take a look at the upload file section. Here you can choose a file on your computer and for example, choose hello world and then press upload. Now I got one more hello world file as you see here. And we can also go back to the folder and see that uh, the folder structure reflects this change. Finally, we have a box with a copy paste area. This is very useful if you just want to share a link between two browsers. I can actually open another tab to really simulate how I would use this in the real world. Let's say this uh, left area is my computer and this right one is my phone logged on to the same server. If I want to share a link, I just type it in here and I press upload. Then the text will be stored in this uh, area and I can refresh the page on the other device and I will have access to the same text here. So this is just a very simple way to share things if you just want to share some text quickly. So that was a quick look at the features and how you use them. You can download the file using the link in the description or you can go to github.com and search for the repository name, tips file server. Here you will find the repository and you can see the code. If you want, you can copy the code directly to a file and use the extension ps1, or you can download the code directly in this zip folder. If you download the file as a zip folder, you will first have to unblock the zip folder to allow us to run the script. We can then unzip it. And the script can now be run. So that's it. I hope you find this script useful. And if you have any ideas on how to improve it, you can add an issue on the GitHub page or you can leave a comment on the video. Thank you.